Uh, welcome to this webinar, uh, the first of a series organized by Euro NMD in collaboration with the European Reference Network for uh, Rare Neurological Diseases, the European Reference Network for Rare Epilepsies, Epicare, and the European Academy of Neurology. During this month of September 2022, we have several webinars uh, happening. One initially was delivered by Michelangelo Macuso about uh, epilepsies related to mitochondrial disorders. Today, we have the opportunity to learn with Dr. Chiara Laborgia that we will talk about mitochondrial uh, movement disorders. Uh, Chiara is a senior researcher of the Dep Department of Biomedical and Neuromotor Sciences uh, in Bologna University, Italy. Uh, she has a main research focus on inherited optic neuropathies and more in general in mitochondrial uh, disorders. Uh, she's a known author and speaker in many meetings. Uh, I am very grateful that you have agreed to, to teach us someone, something new about the mitochondrial movement disorders today, Chiara, and the floor is uh, entirely yours. You can share your presentation if you want. Thank you for your words, I'm, and I'm very pleased to be here today. Okay, so you can see my screen, right? Okay. Okay, uh, so today I will talk about mitochondrial movement disorders. As you all know, mitochondrial disorders are characterized by uh, wide clinical heterogeneity since mitochondrial disorders may affect each organ of the body. So you can have uh, a lot of symptoms that can be extremely variable, variable among diseases. The most common uh, symptoms of mitochondrial disorders are optic atrophy and also ptosis. So uh, since also the genetic background uh, related to these mitochondrial disorders is very wide, I decided to, in order to, you know, in order to um, focus on the main uh, symptom related uh, to this kind of mitochondrial disorders, to focus on the phenotype of optic atrophy and ptosis in association with movement disorders. Uh, in fact, mitochondrial uh, disorders are a dual genetic basis, uh, and uh, mitochondrial disorders can be due uh, both to mitochondrial DNA mutation, but also, as you all know, to nuclear, nuclear gene mutation. So the focus of uh, my presentation we, will be about movement disorders in adults with mitochondrial di disorders, and uh, in association with these two main symptoms, optic atrophy and ptosis. And uh, as you can see from this list, each gene is associated with the um, specific or uh, predominant uh, movement disorder phenotype. Uh, the most common uh, that I will talk about is OPA1, FG, 3L2, uh, and we will touch also other rarer genes. Uh, also, because of uh, a con time constraint, I will not go through uh, uh, movement disorders in association with mitochondrial diseases, which mainly manifest in childhood. Concerning uh, the phenotype of movement disorders associated with ptosis and CPO, uh, we have some genes which are in common with the op uh, optic atrophy uh, phenotype, which is OPA1 in this case, but you can have also optic atrophy with other nuclear genes, as Paul G. Twinkle, but we, we will go more in deep of these uh, single genes and phenotypes. 
So this is a, a recent review uh, of, from the Italian network on mitochondrial movement disorders. And as you can see, the prevalence of movement disorders is, is quite high. You have this 13.7% of um, uh, pa patients presenting a movement disorders among this uh, quite big cohort of patients. The most common movement disorders in this cohort of Italian patients were ataxia, which is the most common, and it was mostly associated with pole, gamma, and MERF um, uh, mitochondrial disorders and Parkinsonism. Uh, you can also have uh, choreic um, uh, movement disorders, dystonic post posture, uh, hyperkinetic disorders in, in general, and the onset of the movement disorder can precede the onset of the mitochondrial phenotype. The mean age at onset of these mitochondrial movement disorders was around 45 years, and the age of onset of primary mitochondrial disease was around 38. Uh, the MERF and pole gamma mutation are the most frequently associated with the movement disorder in this cohort. And if you look at the predominance of this uh, movement disorder phenotype uh, among the mitochondrial disorders, you can recognize uh, as the pole gamma is the, the gene most frequently associated with the movement disorder, and the ataxia is the most common, but you also have this Parkinsonian feature, but also for the uh, MILAS mutation, you have uh, uh, quite a high number of people with ataxia, and in association with MERF, you have the, this recurrence of myoclonus. In the, if you look at the MRI findings in patients uh, with movement disorders in this cohort, you have uh, um, in, uh, about 50% of cases, uh, a global cerebral atrophy. Another um, common feature in terms of uh, neuroradiology feature is uh, the presence of cerebral atrophy. And of course, you have also, especially in people with dystonic posture, you have this uh, recurrence of basal ganglia abnormalities, which is quite typical for mitochondrial disease. And if you perform a spectroscopy, you can find the, this lactate peak in the ventriculi, which is uh, very common, for example, for MILAS patients. So now we will uh, look at the specific phenotypes uh, of Parkinsonism, dystonia, and chorea uh, in adults with mitochondrial disorder, in disorders in which you have the presence also of optic atrophy. So OPA1 is a gene which is commonly associated with optic atrophy. In the majority of cases, you have just optic atrophy, but in a percentage of, pa of a patients, you can have this, uh, which uh, range from 20 to 30% of cases, you have this OPA1 plus phenotype, which usually is characterized by the recurrence of CPO, peripheral neuropathy, deafness, and cerebellar ataxia. But we and other groups recently described also the occurrence of this Parkinsonian feature. Uh, we reported this syndromic Parkinsonism, which uh, uh, segregate uh, along the uh, families uh, with the mutation. And uh, the common feature of these uh, patients is the presence of multiple mtDNA deletions. And most commonly, the, um, the type of mutation associated with this phenotype is the missense mutation affecting the GTPase domain of the protein. Here you can see a video of uh, one of our patients. And you can recognize the classic Parkinsonian feature with this bradykinesia more evident on, on the left side, also this uh, uh, rest tremor on the left side. Uh, and also, the, usually these patients uh, respond um, quite well to the levodopa, uh, levodopa therapy. Um, and also, uh, this patient presented, for example, also the presence of uh, REM behavior disorder, um, which occurs quite, uh, almost simultaneously to the onset of the movement disorder. In this case, the CPO feature uh, appear, appeared uh, before the onset of the movement disorder. This is another example of uh, one of our patients carrying the emissions of a one mutation. 
again, you can recognize this uh, Parkinsonian feature. And in specifically, in this case, you have uh, more evident on the right side of the body uh, where you can recognize also some um, uh, dystonic posture. Uh, in both cases, uh, we performed, of course, that scan, and uh, there is evidence of a bilateral severe defect of the basal ganglia. As you, as you know, uh, OPA1 is a main actor of mitochondrial fusion. Then mutation in this gene lead uh, to an excess fission, which uh, means fragmentation of the mitochondrial network uh, and also is uh, specific of this kind of disease as well as of other nuclear genes associated with mitochondrial disorders, the accumulation of mtDNA multiple deletion. Other genes associated with the movement disorder phenotype and uh, optic atrophy are um, AFG3L2 and SPG7. Specifically in this report, uh, this patient presented first with optic atrophy and then um, developed also uh, a, a Parkinsonian feature from very early in, uh, in the age. And afterward, after these uh, symptoms, uh, it also presented with spastic paraparesi with mild ataxia. In this case, genetic investigation showed the presence of a de novo FG3L2 heterozygous mutation, but also uh, of an intragenic deletion of the SPG7 gene. We also recently described this cohort of uh, patients uh, um, for which uh, we found the presence of AFG3L2 mutation, uh, which, as you know, alter the OPA1 processing and cause mainly optic atrophy, which is the main symptom of the disease. But as you can recognize from the, um, this table, um, the patients can present also movement disorder feature like ataxia, spasticity, myoclonus, as well as hyperkinetic movement, cerebellar signs, and dystonic posture. Uh, we recently diagnosed this uh, patient carrying, uh, in this case, an heterozygous mutation of the um, AFG3L2 uh, gene. And as you can see, this 80-year-old um, um, uh, male, he presented optic atrophy, as is usual for this kind of disease since he was a child. And uh, he also developed this, this, this tonic uh, posture uh, with this uh, prom prominent uh, scoliosis that you can uh, recognize from the video, but also uh, a postural tremor at upper limbs and uh, dystonic um, features. And, and as I said before, genetic analysis revealed the presence of this heterozygous mutation in AFG3L2 gene. So the common theme here is that AFG3L2 is assembling with the paralogous paraplegin SPG7 to form this uh, metalloprotein uh, protease complex, which is involved in mitochondrial protein maturation and degradation. And the, the theme is here that uh, these two proteins are also interacting uh, with OPA1. Uh, and this explains why this genes uh, may have common symptoms and common uh, features in terms of also of clinical manifestations. And as uh, for OPA1, which is a fusion protein, also SPG7 and FG32 are fusion pro protein, which means that if there is a mutation affecting these genes, uh, you have a fragmentation of the mitochondrial network. This is another interesting gene, which is called the SLC25A46. Um, and uh, uh, we uh, described the most common phenotype associated in, with mutation in this gene is the association between optic atrophy, peripheral neuropathy, and cerebellar atrophy. But more recently, also the uh, association with Parkinsonism um, has been reported with this gene. In this case, the, the protein is not a fusion prote protein as uh, it happens for OPA1, but here we have a fission protein, which means that 
uh, when you have a mutation in this gene, you have a hyper uh, fila filamentous uh, mitochondria. Um, and uh, the common theme is the mitochondrial network uh, um, imbalance, but in this case, it's a different mechanism. Another interesting gene which has been associated with movement disorders in mitochondrial disorders is this OPA10, which is called the RTN for uh, IP1 gene. And pathogenic variants of this gene, as you can see from the video of these patients, has been associated also um, with the choreic uh, movements. In this case, uh, um, the patient was carrying uh, homozygous mutation, which is the most common in this gene. And uh, as for other mitochondrial disorder, you can recognize uh, uh, quite early onset of optic atrophy, and afterwards the patient developed uh, correct movements. And if you look at the maximal respiration uh, from skin biopsy from these patients, you can recognize a defect of mitochondrial respiration and specifically a defect of complex one. Uh, this gene, which uh, was thought to be associated uh, only with optic atrophy is in general associated also uh, to more complex neurological phenotypes, as you can see from this is the most, uh, the largest cohort of patients. And you, you can see from uh, this uh, table that uh, six families uh, were reported with isolated optic atrophy and five of them uh, associated also other uh, neurological features such as epilepsy, mental retardation, deafness, increased lactic acid. Now we move to uh, the phenotype of movement disorders in association with the pre predominant CPO uh, phenotype. In this case, uh, uh, in relation to uh, mutation in nuclear, nuclear genes. So this is one of our patients. Uh, she presented with CPO and dysphagia since she was uh, 45 years. Uh, she then developed uh, generalized uh, muscle weakness uh, since uh, uh, 46 years of age. And also she developed uh, uh, about 10, year, uh, 10 years after the onset of the mitochondrial phenotype, the presence of this Parkinsonian feature. You can re recognize from the muscle biopsy, the presence of Cox negative fibers, and also the presence of multiple mtDNA deletion, as well as the presence of lactate peak at the uh, MR, M MR spectroscopy. The patient was carrying uh, Apple G heterozygous mutation, and she died at 67 years of age. Uh, as I said before, um, Paul Gamma is uh, the gene most commonly associated with Parkinsonian feature. Uh, in association with Twinkle, which is another gene which is frequently associated with Parkinsonian uh, symptoms. And uh, this is the first report of Parkins Parkinsonism uh, in association with Polg uh, mutation. And the authors also highlight in this uh, uh, case series, the loss of pigmented neurons in the substantia nigra in the absence of Lewy bodies at um, post-mortem uh, evaluation of these cases. As you know, polymerase gamma is a, a main gene uh, involved in the replication of mtDNA and mutation of this gene are associated with the accumulation of mtDNA multiple deletions. Uh, which are uh, the main, thing also, the main, the main um, uh, feature uh, of park, idiopathic Parkinson in which you can recognize the presence of mtDNA multiple deletion in the substantia nigra, which is uh, the in, um, intersecting theme of these the, um, diseases. Uh, here you can see um, reports uh, associating uh, the occurrence of familial Parkinsonism and Paul G mutation. Uh, usually, Parkinsonian features are quite classical, as I showed before, uh, with the asymmetric onset, uh, with the bradykinetic and the tremor, and also a good response and sustained response to dopaminergic treatment. And this is another interesting uh, feature of polymerase gamma mutation. 
uh, in which you can recognize the presence of uh, negro striatal degeneration, even though the, pa the patient is not presenting the clinical symptoms typical for Parkinsonism. So um, basal gang ganglia seems to be affected quite early in, in the disease course, even if the patient is not pre presenting any uh, symptoms. And if you look uh, at the biochemical defect uh, uh, present at the level of the substantia nigra, you can recognize this complex one defect and also the presence of mtDNA depletion in the substantia nigra neurons of pole gamma patients. And as I said before, which is distinct from the classical idiopathic uh, Parkinson disease, you don't have these le levy bodies. Uh, these two reports um, is for highlighting that also polymerase gamma mutation can be associated with optic atrophy, even though it's not classical and not typical for polygamma. And also you can have polymerase gamma mutation in the absence of CPO, which is uh, on the opposite side, very common for this kind of uh, gene mutation. Here, uh, I'm presenting one patient with dominant mutation in twinkle gene. And uh, as for the other patients with pole G mutation, uh, the onset of CPO was preceding, in this case, the onset of, by about 10 years, the onset of Parkinsonian feature. And you can re recognize the presence of the lactate peak at the uh, MRI, the presence of multiple deletion and uh, of Cox negative fibers. This patient was carrying a twinkle heterozygous mutation. And as you can recognize from the video of this patient, also in this case, you have this bilateral ptosis with ophthalmoparesis, which is very typical of mitochondrial disorders associated with CPO. But also you can recognize this, this bradykinetic and uh, Parkinsonian feature at the neurological examination, more evident on the left side. Uh, twinkle mutation has, has been associated with increase in dopaminergic neurodegeneration, uh, leading to accumulation of mtDNA deletion also in the uh, basal ganglia in the substantia nigra of these patients. And there are also report, uh, report of um, uh, Lewy pathology in association with twinkle as well as of tau pathology, pointing also to a mixed pathology uh, possible in this kind of disease. Another gene that can be associated with the Parkinsonian feature is ANT1, which uh, also in this case uh, is implicated in the uh, DNA maintenance. Uh, mtDNA maintenance and uh, patients presenting mutation in these genes uh, usually present accumulation of mtDNA deletions. This is another interesting gene, which is called DGUOK, which usually is associated with the very early onset disease uh, because this gene leads a very, to a very severe mtDNA depletion and usually very severe infantile form of the disease, very early onset, but uh, most, more recently mutation of this gene have been associated also to adult onset disease characterized by the classical feature of CPO patients. And you can recognize the usual um, appearance of the muscle of this patient with Cox, a lot of Cox negative fibers and accumulation of mtDNA deletion, but also in one case, uh, uh, we observe the presence of Parkinsonian feature, as you can see from this video, with the basal ganglia degeneration, uh, with this cormic feature. And interestingly, as you can see, this patient was characterized also by a significant depletion of the mtDNA. As I said before, another very interesting gene that, that already mentioned in association with the FG3L2 is SPG7, because as you know, SPG7 has been associated with the, the, uh, the classical paraplegia phenotype, but also to CPO feature because of the accumulation of mtDNA multiple deletion. And also in this case series, uh, the authors reported the, the occurrence of Parkinsonism in 21% of cases. 
Six out of seven have also ataxia, spasticity, and CPO, and one has Parkinsonism and PISA syndrome. And as a, a team, which, uh, you know, is uh, something that is very common to these uh, diseases associated with the occurrence of Parkinsonian feature, you, have, um, you can have both the occurrence of mtDNA multiple deletion, but also of mtDNA depletion. Now I'm moving also uh, to uh, the presence of Parkinsonism and dystonia in adults uh, with mitochondrial disorders due to mtDNA mutations, which is less common, but can be present. And specifically, I want to highlight these three, three patients, one carrying um, a mutation in, the TRN, in one of the tRNA uh, for leucine, these patients presented first with CPO, and afterwards it was also uh, manifesting Parkinsonian feature, uh, feature classical par Parkinsonian feature responsive to levodopa, and is presenting the classical uh, evidence of um, mitochondrial myopathy, the generation of basal, basal ganglia, and also you can rec recognize the presence of uh, these abnormalities at, at the level of MRI. This is a MERF patient, um, and this is a, a patient presenting with the classical labor mutation in association also with Parkinsonism. And you, you, as you recognize from the arrows, Parkinsonism is following the maternal lineage, highlighting the possible occurrence of um, association with the um, mtDNA mutation. This is our case with the MERF phenotype which, uh, as you know, is usually characterized by the presence of myopathy, myoclonus, epilepsy, and rugged red fibers. But these patients can present also deafness and other manifestation. In this case, as you can see from the clinical history of the, uh, this 65-year uh, female, she presented first with bilateral deafness. She then developed exercise intolerance. And afterwards, she, uh, she presented cognitive impairment, myoclonus. And uh, um, after 30 years from the onset of, of the mitochondrial uh, phenotype, she presented also with Parkinsonism. And um, that scan shows at that time a moderate severe bilateral defect. Parkinson, uh, Parkinson, uh, Parkinsonian feature in association with the MERF mutation have been uh, previously reported. As well as Parkinsonism has been reported in association with mtDNA um, mutation, in this case, a cytochrome B deletion and other. Uh, kind of mtDNA mutation in association with Parkinsonian features. And here, uh, again, you have this uh, uh, family with the, the 11778 mutation, which is the most common mutation associated with the Labers phenotype, in which you can recognize the familiar occurrence on, along the maternal line, which, which, in, uh, which is typical for mtDNA mutation of Parkinsonian feature. This is another rare mutation, in this case, affecting complex one, the ND1 subunit. And we already reported this case uh, presenting with bilateral brainstem lesion affecting um, also uh, the brainstem, uh, besides the classical labor phenotype. But also in this uh, case series, you have this patient carrying uh, the 3890 mutation who presented with the classical labors, peripheral uh, neuropathy, brainstem and spinal cord lesion, as you can see from the MRI, but also Parkinsonian feature. And as well as you can recognize in this case with another rare um, mutation affecting the complex one, the presence of both, both optic neuropathy and bilateral brainstem lesions. Uh, at the onset of this uh, um, uh, symptomatology, the, patient, the patients also uh, presented uh, quite severe ataxia. And interestingly, um, also mm, this tonic uh, feature uh, have been associated uh, with mtDNA mutation, usually with childhood onset. Uh, and you, you can recognize which is the common feature of patients presenting this tonic um, feature uh, is the presence usually of bilateral striatal necrosis, which is typical, for example, for Lee disease, but can be also recognized in uh, 
mutation aff affecting a subunit of the complex one. And in particular, I would like to emphasize this uh, particular mutation, which is the 14459 uh, mutation affecting the ND6 subunit of com complex one, which in the same family may lead to the classical liver phenotype, but also as in this case, uh, that as you can see from the video, you can have this very severe spastic uh, dystonic feature and um, in particular, this patient presented this uh, spastic dystonia since she was eight years of age after a febrile episode. You know that usually uh, um, fever can be a precipitating factor for mitochondrial disorders. And uh, you can recognize this bilateral striatal necrosis. Uh, and she, um, she does not have any optic atrophy feature. A difference uh, with these other two persons in the family, uh, which we presented with the classical liver phenotype, but without any spastic dystonia. Uh, so the concept here, even in the presence of the, uh, the same homoplasmic mu mutation, you can have this uh, wide variability of the, the um, clinical manifestation. And uh, for um, in the same family, you can have one patient with presenting only uh, the, uh, the labor phenotype, one uh, with the only um, spastic dystonia fissure and other uh, combination of these symptoms. Another important theme uh, which I want to highlight in this presentation is that mitochondrial involvement is well recognized also for sporadic Parkinson's disease. As you know, in fact, there is um, good evidence of complex one defect in idiopathic Parkinson's disease, as well as mtDNA genetic variants and mutation, as I showed you before, as well as mtDNA deletion and depletion have been reported in Parkinson's disease. And Parkinson's is, is a quite common feature in mitochondrial syndromes due to defects of mtDNA maintenance, which is something that we already uh, discussed. And also uh, monogenic forms of Parkinson's disease are due to mutation in nuclear genes encoding mitochondrial or mitochondrial related proteins. If um, looking at the single aspects of this uh, mitochondrial uh, defect uh, in idiopathic Parkinson's disease, you know that in environmental toxic uh, like MT MPTP paraquatrotenone uh, are all inhibiting complex one of the mitochondrial respiratory chain and can induce Parkinsonism, as well as the reduction of complex one activity is found in tissues from patients affected by sporadic Parkinson's disease. Another important point is uh, the association, as I showed before, of mtDNA point mutation with Parkinsonian feature but also there is this theme of the association of mitochondrial uh, haplogroups uh, with par pa idiopathic Parkinson's disease. So the question uh, which was uh, uh, discussed and uh, you know, uh, investigated in the past years um, about the presence of a specific, specific mtDNA mutation which lead uh, to a sporadic Parkinson's disease without all the other mitochondrial feature is no, because the sequence analysis of the entire mitochondrial genome of, of sporadic Parkinson's disease uh, was uh, unrevealing any mutation. But there is also um, an association with the uh, cluster of uh, mtDNA polymorphic variants. And specifically from this study is um, evident that haplogroup K can be protective for, for Parkinson's disease and haplogroup HV uh, in, increased the risk for Parkinson's disease. In 1990, uh, this is a first report on the accumulation of mtDNA deletions in patients with Parkinson's disease. In the, in specifically, in this case, there is evidence of accumulation of deleted mitochondrial DNA in the striatum of Parkinson's disease patients and senescence, because as you know, there is an accumulation of deletion also with the cl classical aging process, which is accelerated in Parkinson's disease. 
In fact, in the substantia nigra of neurons of this uh, uh, aging, but also Parkinson's disease patients, the authors demonstrated the, the presence of high levels of mitochondrial DNA deletions, which uh, different um, with expanded clonally in individual cells, leading to respiratory chain dysfunction. In fact, as you can see from this uh, graph, you have this uh, high percentage of COX deficient neurons uh, in uh, Parkinson disease compared to controls, uh, which point to the presence of an expansion of single deletion uh, clonally, uh, leading to a COX deficiency, uh, a COX deficiency in, in these patients. But also, as I mentioned before, for the classical Parkinsonian, Parkinsonian feature recurring in association with mitochondrial disorders, also in sporadic idiopathic Parkinson disease patients, you have this evidence of mtDNA depletion and defective mitochondrial homeostasis, which is something which um, is in common uh, with these uh, um, disorders. And lastly, uh, we can recognize also that there are monogenic Parkinson disease, which uh, are due to mutation of mitochondrial or at least mitochondrial related proteins, for example, alpha synuclein, DJ1, LRRK2, but also Parkin and PINK1, uh, which are um, very implicated in mitophagy in Parkinson disease can lead to um, genetic cases of Parkinson. Specifically, uh, PINK1 and Parkin are on the same pathway, pathway and they are um, uh, involved in the regulation of mitochondrial function and mito network. In fact, the presence of mitochondrial dysfunction has, has been reported uh, in uh, PINK1 mutant and can be uh, complemented and rescued by Parkin. And the loss of function of these two protein uh, is leading to a fragmentation uh, of the mitochondrial network. That, as I showed before, for OPA1, FG32 is the common theme, theme of the mitochondrial disorders as associated with defects in mtDNA maintenance and mitochondrial network uh, fragmentation. And as I said before, silencing of Parkin and PINK1 leads to fragmented mito network. And also is known that PINK1 dependent recruitment of Parkin to mitochondria in mitophagy, uh, which is a leading mechanism uh, also in sporadic idiopathic Parkinson disease, as well as for genetic cases. And more recently, it's also known that Parkin um, is involved in the regulation of mitochondrial biogenesis through Paris, and also in the regulation of mitochondrial fusion through uh, this other protein, which is called NEMO. So in conclusion, we can say that movement disorders are quite a frequent features of mitochondrial disorders, Parkinsonism is a relatively frequent feature of mtDNA maintenance disorders characterized by the accumulation of the mtDNA deletion or depletion, and is particularly frequent for uh, pole gamma mutations. The occurrence of a movement disorders, in particular Parkinsonism, dystonia, chorea, should raise the suspect of a mitochondrial disease due to nuclear gene mutation if this is associated with optic atrophy, and you have this gene that I showed before, or the CPO phenotype, which is more, more commonly associated with Paul Gamma, Twinkle, Antoine, DG, UK, okay, and PV17, and SPG7. Mitochondrial disorders due uh, to primary mtDNA mutation, MILAS, MERF, Labers, and others, can also be associated to mitochondrial disorders, and in particular, Parkinsonian and dystonic features are re reported in association with mtDNA mutations. Basal ganglia are a frequent target of diseases of disease in mitochondrial disorders. 
And mtDNA deletion accumulate with aging, specifically in dopaminergic neurons of the substantia nigra, and this is particularly evident in Parkinson's disease. Additionally, mtDNA depletion and complex one defect have been reported in uh, the substantia nigra neurons of Parkinson's disease. Moreover, there are monogenic forms of Parkinson's disease due to genes which have a clear impact on mitochondrial function that I already mentioned before. And with this, I would like to thank you for the attention. And these are some readings for, for the topic. And um, I'm happy to take uh, questions. Thank you. Thank you, Chiara. Uh, very complex presentation, but that's not unusual in your field of expertise. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's rather interesting and important uh, for us to know all these subtleties. Um, usually people are a bit shy in these meetings, so uh, there's no questions uh, that I see and there are no raised hands. So I'll start and uh, usually that breaks the highs and people will start putting questions directly to you. Okay. So uh, as an adult uh, neurologist, my question would be um, that uh, what is the percentage of Parkinson uh, patients that you see in, a, in a clinical neurology clinics that may have this kind of diseases. So uh, I understand that obviously if the patient has a very coarse ataxia or some cerebellar ataxia or uh, some impairment of vision of, or of hearing, uh, that may give you, uh, or other more encephalopathic things, that may give you a, a hint towards that uh, diagnosis. But my question is, we are talking, and you've shown a few cases of OPA1, for instance, that uh, uh, involved patients that were not far behind the age where you usually see the idiopathic Parkinson. So uh, in those patients at that age, you would expect some deafness or some trouble uh, with vision. But uh, how do you pinpoint uh, the where do you put the line and what recommendations would you give regarding the diagnosis or the suspicion of diagnosis of a mitochondrial entity? Yeah. As you correctly said, the, uh, the presence of the only Parkinsonian feature with some vague uh, visual disturbances is not enough to point to a mitochondrial disorder. But for example, if you have this association of, I would say, the, the, the most uh, important uh, association I would like I'd highlight is the presence of ptosis and CPO, deafness, optic atrophy. Peripheral neuropathy and Parkinsonism, for example, is something that you have to think about uh, a mitochondrial disorders. For MILAS, the occurrence of diabetes, which is not the classical uh, senile diabetes occurring after 60 years of age, but which is uh, some uh, juvenile onset. So this is something that you have to think about, about a mitochondrial disorders. Mm -hmm. Good. So as I promised, the, René Vicou has a question. So René, if you want to unmute yourself and put the question directly, otherwise I will read it. Yes. Okay, um, thank you. Thank you very much for your um, e e extensive and, and very interesting uh, lecture. Um, and what you do is describe the phenotype of the atrophy, uh, dystonia, Parkinsonism, and I wonder, and I take as an example, uh, for example, one of the Lieber families with the common uh, 1178 mutation, where you show that in some cases, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the carriers present with um, optic atrophy, uh, loss of vision, some have dystonia, and some of them have the combination. Any ideas what contributes or what, uh, takes care for the differentiation in the, in, in the different phenotypes because 
this mm. is a type of pathogenesis and, and that would be interesting to know a bit more about. Yeah, cannot be related to the mitochondrial mutation since they are all homoplasmic. So this is something that cannot, cannot differentiate the patients. So maybe there is some uh, heterogeneity in terms of genes, genetics uh, in the nuclear genome. So we are looking also to variants, maybe in the nuclear genome that can explain this uh, wide variability. But as you know, for also for Liber's mutation, you, uh, you have families, very big families, carrying, uh, all carrying the homoplasmic mutation, only some of them, which is the concept of variable penetrance. And there is no clear explanation besides the fact, for example, that carriers of Leber's mutation have uh, an higher levels of mtDNA. So the mitochondrial biogenesis is a compensating mechanism that maybe can explain why some patients are affected and some are not. But I, I have no clear explanation for this uh, uh, variability of the phenotype in the same family carrying the same mitochondrial mutation at the moment. But could you expand on the, on the uh, for example, uh, is the reason uh, likely in the uh, other mitochondrial genes, in nuclear genes, or is it, uh, yeah, uh, epi yeah, other it's other reasons like 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 smoking or whatever or behavior? Yeah, um, of course we look at the entire uh, mitochondrial DNA, DNA molecule, and uh, we didn't find any other mutation because usually in this, uh, you know. Um, quite peculiar cases, we are running the entire sequence of the empty DNA. So maybe the explanation is um, something in the, uh, nuclear in, in, uh, in the nuclear genes, or maybe as you said, uh, is uh, uh, environmental triggered. But if you think about the case that, that I presented, this was a childhood onset disease. So it's a kind of difficult to explain in terms of uh, environments. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Beata Vazieska, uh, uh, you can unmute yourself if you want and put your question, otherwise I'll read it. Okay, so Beata asks, what are the treatment suggestions um, uh, for um, movement disorders that are secondary to mitochondrial uh, disease. Okay, for the patients uh, presenting Parkinsonism, we are, as I said before, since they are responding quite well to the classical uh, levodopa treatment, we are treating them as the classical Parkinsonian patients. But in, a, uh, in, a, in addition to the symptomatic treatment, we are also using some uh, supplements uh, for uh, ameliorating the mitochondrial function, which can be, for example, idibenon, uh, which is uh, able to bypass uh, the complex one defect. And for some of these patients, we are also adding some uh, also creatine and uh, lipoic acid, which is an antioxidant to improve the mitochondrial function as well. And if the patient is presenting more a myopathic fissure, uh, we are usually prefer to use, uh, for example, um, uh, ubidecarenone instead of idibenone, because ubidecarenone is more specific for the myopathic fissure. And for patients presenting more CNS involvement, we are using idibenone because it's able to um, enter the uh, uh, CNS. Very well. So Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. I, I'm listening from the car, so <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. That's, that's all right. Thank you. So um, I'm going to unmute Marco. Marco Macucci, uh, do you want to put your question live? Because I've, uh, I've allowed you to speak. Do you want to unmute yourself and speak up? Okay, thank you for the very good lesson, first of all. My question is, uh, are there any contraindications for classical anti-Parkinsonian drugs when the pathogenesis is mitochondrial? 
No, for the classical anti-Parkinsonian drug, I would say no. There is uh, some problems uh, with the neurolactics. So for example, if the patient is presenting also uh, agitation or uh, you know, behavioral problems, uh, we are very careful in using complex one uh, inhibitors. And as you know, most of the neuroleptic drugs, they are uh, inhibiting complex one, especially the first generation. But uh, concerning the classical dopam dopamine agonists uh, and uh, the classical uh, levodopa, no contraindication besides the classical, you know, cardiological problems. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Well, then it's my turn to put the question there. Uh, so you talked about an uh, 18-year guy with a AFG3L2 mm. form, and uh, you spoke about his scoliosis and dystonia. I was wondering what type of relationship were you doing between the two of them, or if it was just my impression. Oh, no, I was not making a relationship. It's just because uh, in, when I visiting him, I noticed this very severe uh, scoliosis. I'm not sure if this sec secondary to the dystonic posture, maybe, but it's, it's not a relation in between them. I mean, so you, you've never noticed more scoliosis in earlier onset patients than in more uh, late onset patients? Yeah, maybe yes, it's more common, the presence of scoliosis, because um, I, for example, for that case, but also others, uh, this is something that usually you notice to have this scoliotic feature, pro probably related secondary to the dystonic postures. Okay. So another thing is about cognition. Mm -hmm. So Parkinson is infamous for the cognitive impairment, and many of the mitochondrial disease patients, unfortunately, have a strong uh, encephalopathy or at least some kind of involvement of cognition in several domains. So um, is there any hint from the cognitive assessment of a Parkinson patient, for instance, uh, towards having uh, a mitochondrial disorder and not a Parkinson or a Lewy body or whatever other Parkinson mm. was. Uh, yeah, so. I understand what you mean. Um, there is not a specific cognitive feature which point to a mitochondrial disorders. And I would say, as I said before, that usually you have to put this because also the patient that was presenting the one with the OPA one also has a lot of uh, cognitive problems and also other people in the family. I would put uh, these symptoms together with the presence. For example, if you see ptosis and CPO in association with Parkinson, this is something that you have that bring you to think about the mitochondrial disorders, but there is no, I would say like executive, um, executive dysfunction, which is more specifically, or maybe we didn't study uh, carefully the presence of something specific. Very well. So um, we have no more questions on the table, apparently. Uh, I would like to thank you very much for this nice presentation. I am convinced that everybody present uh, learned something today. I did, for sure. And uh, I hope to see you very soon, because in fact, you'll be presenting <laughs> the last of these webinar series uh, very soon on the yeah. 20th. Yeah. Next week. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> thank, thank you. you very much, Chiara. And thank you all bye for bye. the Good webinar. Bye-bye. Thank bye. you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. bye.